first real feud, I guess, would have been with Jake Roberts. The real, yes, my first big feud came with Jake. Jake had been a bad guy, and Jake was a bad guy. Now I'm the bad guy, and I go out and do Jake the Snake Snake Pit, and Jake's interviewing me, calling me all these grease ball, dressed up like Evas. Who do you think you are? Well, when Jake first went out to do his Jake the Snake Pit, of course, the people booed him because he had been in matches with Savage and been in matches with Hogan, and he was a bad guy. He had had a, he had had a few of those before where he was getting over as a bad guy, but they thought that Jake could serve them better as a good guy, and they wanted to promo me into upper level on the card. So they said, go out, and this, when Jake starts talking, blah, 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 and he turns his back to reach to pick the snake up, and he turns around, you whack him. And when I hit Jake with a guitar, that place cheered Jake. I mean, they turned on me like rabid animals. And from then on, Jake was a good guy. So it really, we didn't have to do more than a two-minute interview segment for me to turn Jake. So Jake actually uh, claims that that whole guitar hit, that it was a very heavy guitar, and that actually screwed him up so much that he got hooked on <laughs> pain fetish to the drug. Did, did you ever hear of, of Jake doing drugs before that? Because, of course, I've read quite a few lesson books. Road Royer Animal even says he was quite into drugs back when, when they were roommates. So this would have been numerous years later. Do you think uh, you really injured Jake? And did that injury have anything to do with this, what is it, 30 plus year now drug? That he claims that I hurt him and he had to have neck surgery. Well, I always say this, the stuff that I knocked out of Jake's nose, I mean ears, was <laughs> the powder that came out of the guitar was not the kind that Jake was using, let's put it that way. But here's the point, and f the fact of the matter is this. Jake wrestled two more years before he had neck surgery. He wrestled two years after I hit him with a guitar, before he even complained about neck surgery. Jack, Jake, Jack, Jake was, <laughs> Jake was in and out of rehab several times while we were having our program together after the WrestleMania three. And that's, I mean, Jake had his demons and he admits that. The thing that bothered me the most was Mick Foley wrote in his book that I permanently injured Jake, caused Jake Roberts to have neck surgery, which probably shortened Jake's career. So I, I took offense to that, and I called Foley like a man should. I called him up, and I said, Mick, why did you write this in your book and say these things? Promoters are going to read this and think I hurt people. And I said, I've never hurt anybody in my life in this business, ever. He said, well, that's what Jake told me. I said, you mean that's the only person you asked was Jake? I said, why didn't you ask me? I mean, I'm, I said, you're a journalist now. You're writing books. Yes. I said, a good journalist will go to all his sources. He will ask everyone before he forms an opinion. I said, you never asked me. If you would asked me, I'd have told you. The guitar was so gimmicked that I had to hide it because some of the boys would come along and they'd like to pick it up and play with it. Don't, don't, don't touch it, don't touch it. So I had to go hide this thing. We had cut it, and that was a big heavy guitar, but we had cut it with a, 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 a carpet knife and cut X's and cut lines in it. And I, we took a black, permanent marker and blacked it in all the white parts so you couldn't see the white part of the of, of the the wood it was so gimmick that I I mean I pushed on it with my thumb and I thought it was going to break and I told Jimmy Hart I said we got to hide this because it's going to get broken that's the only one we had now what was uh, Mick Foley's response to the apology? he told me he was sorry he says you know you're right I should have asked somebody other than Jake I said given Jake's reputation and Jake said openly admitted all his demons I said why would you want to believe Jake he says well you know I was been around Jake a few times and everything I I trusted his opinion I said well you know but anyway it was I mean we didn't have a we didn't have harsh words or anything by any means he talks actually in the same book that Jake when he was traveling with Jake Jake didn't overcome his demons and <laughs> so back when he was doing his religious gimmick even so, so that feud, I guess the epitome of that feud was uh, WrestleMania three, and Alice Cooper was involved with that match. What was WrestleMania three like for you? Probably the biggest wrestling event of all time, 
And any memories of Alice Cooper from that night? We knew that the WrestleMania three was going to be big. We never, none of us ever dreamed it was going to be that big. Uh, as far as going out there, you couldn't see the people. They looked like they were so far up. They looked like tiny little ants. And if you ever get a chance to show that photo and, and, and so the people can see that aerial view from the top of the building down, I showed it to my daughter the other day. She never seen it. I said, this is what we had one time. This is the kind of people we drew. And she said, gosh, Dad, you can't even recognize them. They look like little ants. I said, yes, there was 90-something thousand people. We never dreamed it'd be that big. We never dreamed it would take off like it did after that. WrestleManias had been so-so. WrestleMania one had been not a real profit for WWE because they tried to simulcast or something, or maybe that was WrestleMania two where they tried to do it from two different places, and it was it was a not a, a it wasn't a complete failure. But it, as far as business wise, it was not good. WrestleMania three put Vince McMahon and WWF over the top. And to be in there with Alice Cooper, uh, you know, I'd never met him before. He lives in Phoenix. Aretha Franklin was there and sang and everything. And we were interviewed backstage by that girl, Mary Hart, that was a, on that Entertainment Tonight show for so many years. It was a star-studded event, but we had been on the road. I want the fans to remember this and keep in mind. We had been on the road like 50-something days straight. We had the night off. If I remember, we might not even had the night off before WrestleMania three. I don't even think we did. I think we wrestled somewhere that night and drove into Detroit and went to that show that day. And we didn't know how big the crowd was until the first match went out and saw the crowd. But being with Alice Cooper, it wasn't a. It was Jake's idea to have Alice Cooper because he thought, well, Alice Cooper handles snakes and Alice Cooper's, you know. T top name in, in, the, in the rock uh, alternative rock kind of music business and had a big following at the time and was from Detroit so it, that enhanced the crowd a little bit but we get out there and before we went out Jake showed Cooper the size of the snake and this was a big snake and Cooper was like I don't know if I can do this I only handle like those little bitty ones you know I don't mess with those big ones Jake told him oh, it'll be okay blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway Cooper was like really nervous and every time i would get on jake i'd get jake over near alice cooper and i'd hammer on him and say you're gonna be next alice what kind of name do you have alice anyway he almost got ready to climb into the ring and jump on me because i had gotten him so worked up with beating on jake come on cooper you're next when i finish with him bing 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 and then when he did get in the ring and he had this big snake he could hardly hold it and he was had to put it on jimmy hart and jimmy was struggling and wouldn't Jake almost had to break Jimmy's neck to hold him. 